All right, let's see if uh, the audio is working now before I start making a bunch of noise. All right, can you hear me? David, it sounds loud and clear. Cool, we're good to go. There it is. All right, appreciate it. Sorry about that. Let me just check something here real quick. Now that we've got sound. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm not sure why that is. It's weird. I don't have any issues when I do this on Zoom with my students. And I was just doing it earlier, lesson earlier, and we had no issues with the mic. <laughs> All right, cool. So everybody that's here, glad you could find me again. Go ahead and check out the curriculum that's at the bottom of the former link. All right, that's where the, the curriculum is. And we're going to be working on the modes this week, starting this week. We've got a long series coming down the pipeline, everybody. So just to give you a quick overview about where, where we're headed with this, there's seven modes in the major scale. And what I'm going to do is spend two weeks on each one. So it's going to be 14 week series here tonight. We're going to start with the first mode and then we're going to continue next Wednesday with that same mode, but going a little deeper into it. So there you go on that. So go ahead and print out the curriculum. There's only two sheets. There's no backing track. Cool. All right. Good to see everyone again. Zane and Laura, David, Steve. Yeah. King 50 right on. Okay, cool. So hopefully you could go retrieve the curriculum from the last uh, link that went no volume on us. Oh, cool, Jim. Appreciate it. Yep. And second chance band. Cool. All right. Yay. Thanks, loyal guitar players, for following and trying to find this. Man, I love technology, but sometimes it's frustrating. Okay. So my name is Dave Salantano, everybody. If you don't know me already, and... Guitar Tricks is sponsoring our Wednesday night classes. Really great guitar lesson company to uh, study from. And we've got a lot of killer uh, videos with tablature and lessons on the site. Plus, we've got several instructors that can do live one-on-ones over the internet with anyone that's having issues with that. Oh, wow, Laura. I'm Really? Because I just went in the site and downloaded the two sheets off of it. So that's odd that they're not available. Hmm. Yeah, I just went on on a different because I use Chrome for doing these lessons on YouTube. But my normal uh, internet browser is Safari. I just went on Safari into this uh, link that you guys see on YouTube for promoting the class. And then right there, there's a blue URL, URL link. And I just opened it up and printed it out. David says he has two sheets. Cool. So David got them. Yeah. Uh, Laura, just keep, see if you can uh, work around that. Yeah. Okay. And Laura, I can always get them to you later too. If, uh, if, at your next lesson, or um, if you remind me, just send me an email and I'll send the stuff to you. Okay, so, and this is for beginners too. So we're not here to get all crazy and do this incredible stuff with the modes. I just want to show the basics of them. And hey, Maverick, I want to give everyone in the basics and try to give a slight understanding. Hopefully you'll walk away. Oh, cool. Second Chance Band got the sheets earlier today too. All right, cool, cool. So there's sort of a confusion with the modes. They're, they're a little more perplexing than they need to be. And I'll try to make this as simple as possible. There's a lot of different ways to interpret the modes, uh, to approach them. I'm going to show you the two ways that really help me to understand them. And of course, at the end of the day, everybody, just because you might understand the information academically, like from reading the top of my page, some of the theory stuff I put up there and the patterns just because you can play them, the scales up and down, the modes up and down, and you understand the theory. If you can't 
apply it to your guitar and play over a backing track that's in Ionian and make it sound musical, then we still have some work to do. So that's the magic. Try to find some backing tracks that are specific for the mode that we're going to be studying or you're going to be studying. And that's the best way to uh, practice over it. Now, I am going to show next week on the second sheet that's written in tablature. I'm going to go over that next week with everybody. That's a way that you can hear the sound of the modes in a slightly different perspective using an open string drone as we play the mode on one string. Okay, so that's a second approach that we're going to try with them. But for today, let's just work on the neck diagrams, talk about this. Feel free to put some questions up in the comment, the chat area, if you have uh, any questions or comments or anything. Because I'll bet if someone has a question about something you're not getting, I'll bet a lot of the other folks watching have that same question or a similar one. So don't feel bad about asking questions at all. A bang. Hello. There you go. <laughs> all right. David's saying, which notes will vary in the major modes? Is there anything more than pentatonic that doesn't change? Well, let's talk about this for a sec. So we're looking at the page I gave everybody on that first, uh, you know, the, the one diagram. Okay. Print that out on mine. Uh, it's a yellow neck diagram, but on my printer, I ran out of the yellow ink and the red ink. So I've got green dots highlighted with my highlighter where the root notes are. In your diagrams, everybody, the red dots are the root notes and the black ones are the other notes of the scale. And then inside the notes, all the red dots have an R, stands for root. All the other black dots, though, have numbers. And those numbers relate to the position of that note relative to the key we're in. So the root note, another word for the root note, everybody, is it's note number one. That's the foundational note. So if we play example, or not example, but the very first neck diagram, this is what the Ionian sounds like. What we want to do is start on the root note, then go up the scale and back down, play all the black dots in sequential order, and then end on the root note. That's step one. So that's the root up top. See, if we don't end on the root note, you hear how it leaves you hanging? Okay. And then the mode we're doing is the Ionian mode. That's the first mode. Let's read the top of the, the little text box I got up there, and that'll help explain it for a sec. Um, Laura's saying, for your information, I had three third-party cookies to save on Chrome. All good now. Oh, good, Laura. Good to know. Thanks. Um, so Ionian uh, is nice and bold. It's the first mode. And it starts on the first degree, or in other words, the first note of the major scale. So when we're playing the major scale, and we're all familiar with this, who hasn't heard this sound? If I play the root note to the next root note an octave higher, you'll totally recognize the sound of this. Let's try it backwards. It's the do, re, mi scale. Do, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's the most common scale in Western music, which would pretty much be the music that everybody here tonight listens to. Whether we're listening to jazz, classical, heavy metal, blues, rock and roll, country, all those styles of music use the same 12 notes. It's amazing what can be done with just 12 notes and, and not just 12 notes, the 12 notes. They're the only 12 notes in, in the music that we hear. Okay. Granted, there's other styles of music where they have quarter steps and, and microtonal uh, degrees between those uh, 12 notes. But the, the ones that sound the best, if you're familiar with Pythagoras, he was, a, I believe, a mathematician and philosopher from a long time ago. But he, he didn't invent the scale and the notes, but he just discovered that when you break a, a note's harmonics down into frequencies, there's certain 
areas where the notes sound the, the the breakdown sounds good. Like one octave is when you take a note and then cut it exactly, you know, halfway between the the whatever the frequency is. Like if the frequency of uh, a 440 is 440, I believe hertz. All right. Now if you cut that in half, you got 220. That would be, I believe, the octave lower. And if you double four 420, no, 440 would be uh, 880. That would be the octave higher. So you've got breaking it up, and it's just math, folks. And then if you break the octave not in half, but into like quarters or thirds, you get other intervals and other notes. So that's anyway, long story short, that's what Pythagoras kind of realized. And that's how we came up with the 12 notes that we use in the music we hear. So Anyway, it doesn't have anything to do with the modes other than the fact that we're using some of those notes. Now, in the major scale, everybody, and do, re, mi is right, Roland. Yep, yep. The And King 50, you got a darn good question there. What does the P and the triangle and the black circle stand for? I'm going to go over that in two secs because there's a little more that I also want to show you in that as well. So how many notes are in the major scale, everybody, or the Ionian mode? Not how many dots are on the page, there's a lot there, but how many different notes? If you play starting from the root and count up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then the eighth note is the one again. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where the term octave comes from, because octa, like octopus or an octagon, is an eight. Octopus has eight tentacles or eight arms. Octagon has eight sides, geometric figure, kind of like our stop sign here in America. Okay, so that octave is the eighth note up from the first. It's the same note, though. So there's only seven different notes. And that's what we're going to be working on is seven. Remember, I said Pythagoras broke the octave into 12 fragments. And we got the 12 notes. We're only going to use seven of those 12 notes for the Ionian mode. So step one, everybody, is just get familiar with playing that pattern up and down. If you know any of your scale sequences, like going in threes. Yeah, that's a great one to do, do it backwards. Ah. Always try to end on the root note. That kind of glues everything together. If you know your fours, you go up in fours. Okay, if you already know how to do some of those sequences through your scales, maybe your pentatonic scale, and we've got some great lessons on guitar tricks that run, or actually exercise, lessons that do exercises through like the pentatonic scale and sequences of threes, you could apply that. Instead of doing the pentatonic scale, do it with the Ionian mode that we're working on today. Okay, that's a good way of getting your patterns down even better, because when we play solos, everybody... We're going to mix up the notes of the scale. So you don't want to get good at only playing it up and down. You want to be able to play it forwards and all these different interval distances apart. You want to be able to jump up. You want to be able to jump around the scale and have it sound kind of musical, but not so, um, and also not random or, or sounding like exercises. Okay, and I'll, I'll play some stuff over a backing track in a little bit and give everyone an idea what uh, what you can do with this. Let me just catch up on the comments real quick here. Cool, cool. Leslie Much. All right, cool. Watching from Vancouver Island. All right, thanks for joining, Leslie. Cool. All right, so before we go too deep into this, uh, King50 asked a really good question. He says, what is what does the P and the triangle in the black circle stand for? 
All right, the, I use guitar neck diagrams. Um, I think it's that or it's just neck diagrams. But it's by default, I couldn't change what they put inside the dots. Um, so here's the deal. And this kind of ties in with the theory a little bit. So this will be good for everybody. Um, R stands for root. Obviously, I define that. The triangle, also known as the delta symbol, okay, in Jazz music, a lot of times they use these symbols. The triangle means a major. Could be like major seven or a major third or a major two. All right. That means the interval is from the major scale as well. And we'll, we'll talk about the distances like whole steps and half steps. We'll do that a little more next week because that's what page, the tablature page that we're not going to go over today. That has the whole steps and half steps. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but the delta sign means it's a major interval or major, you know, if the, if the triangle signs and it's, I see it in front of the two, three, six, and seven. So that means that those, the two, the three, six, and seven are all major intervals. In other words, they're also from the major scale. The P stands for a perfect interval. And you'll notice there's a P in front of the four and the five or the fourth and fifth notes in the scale because the fourth and fifth they don't have a minor or major quality. Okay, you're not going to hear of a major or minor four or a major or minor fifth. Now we will hear of a flat five, the blues note, but that's that's in a different context. We're not going to be touching on that today. And you could also consider uh, playing a sharp four, but when you do that, you're not saying a major four or a minor five. You just call it a flat five or a sharp four. It's actually the same note. So the perfect just means it's a perfect interval. And also, too, just my ear, just from playing the two notes, the root to the fourth, they always sound very fat and even. They don't have any dissonance to them. Same with a power chord, a perfect fifth. You hear how it sounds very even? But if I play the root to the third, it has a little bit, see, it kind of it has a little bit of a rumble to it. And then the same with the six. Okay. You got to be careful when playing the major intervals with a lot of distortion. They tend to sound a little kind of dissonant and kind of messy of the overdrive. The distortion tends to rub those notes in an unpleasant way sometimes. So they always sound a little better if you use less distortion. If you play clean, they even sound better. That's why jazz guitarists or jazz musicians, they play a lot of these intervals in their complex chords, but they don't sound messy. They sound beautiful because they're playing with a relatively clean sound. See, if I play a funky jazz chord with a very little amount of gain, it sounds good. But if I were to add a ton of gain on there, let me just put a, add a little more overdrive. See, it starts to sound a little messy. But if I cut off that overdrive, it sounds a little more pretty. So the major intervals, if you're playing them as a chord or both of the notes ringing at the same time, like the root to the third, root to the six or seven, you got to be careful about the overdrive because it could um, you use your ear too. You know, it, it to my ear, sometimes the... Too much overdrive with those intervals sounds a little dissonant, okay? But you notice in a lot of hard rock music, like punk and some of rock music and heavy metal, they do a lot of power chords and fourths. Like when guitar players tune drop D and they play all one finger power chords, like Soundgarden, um, Spoonman, or some of Nirvana stuff, you can get away with that. The fourths, tuning the sixth string down, a whole step allows you to play a power chord with one finger. Okay. But it sounds like this. Okay. That sounds you could put on a ton of overdrive and anything with a root to a fifth or a root to a fourth sounds very nice and heavy and fat and meaty. <clears throat> See, if I were to do this, Sounds good with the power chord, but if I add in the third, it sounds a little 
messy. That's to my ear, but you could be the judge. Really, we're all uh, we all have good ears, relatively good ears. So just use your own discretion. Hey, Roland's saying, uh, still don't understand the difference between Delta and the P5. Well, Delta means it's a major interval, Roland. Just go with this for right now. As we're going to play stuff, just, just know that this is the name. That's why I'm saying this is for beginners because I don't want to go too deep. Or, uh, and sometimes I think when I start talking, I might get a little deep. But just, just know that the triangle or the Delta sign means major. So in the scale... You might want to consider this when you're practicing, everybody, is get familiar with the numeric name of your notes. I know it's also a lot of teachers, and me included, I want my students to get to know their alpha names of their notes on the fretboard. But for the modes right now, you'll understand them a little better if you detach from the letter names and just go with the numeric names. Because when we play in C major, for instance, the letters are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If I play in B flat, for instance, just a whole step lower, it looks exactly the same, sounds just like the major scale. The shape of it's the same, but the notes, the letters are totally different. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. See, they're different. Every scale that you play different from C will have totally different letters and they're going to have some of them as sharps, some of them as flats. But if you think about the notes as numbers, numerically, everybody, if I play the C major scale, but think of it numerically, it's root or number one, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seven, octave or the root. Now, if I play any other key like B flat, it's the same exact numbers. Root, number one, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major six, major seven, octave, or the one again. If I played A flat, totally different notes, but it's the same numbers. Okay, it works the same way. So I really encourage everyone, and I hope your brain doesn't hurt from doing this, but try to think about these as numbers. And that's why the, there's numbers in those little circles, so you can get familiar with that. Okay, good question there, Roland. Just hang tight. Just know what the name of it is. But as we go further, we'll start to get a hang of what's going on here. I love, like the screen name there. My knees hurt. <laughs> Intervals are more important than note names, I feel. Very cool. Yeah, because if you know the note name, that's great. But every single, there's 12 different notes in music. So there'll be 12 different keys, 12 different major scales. Each one of those 12 has completely different notes. A lot of the notes are very similar, but that's where the sharps and flats come in. And they're different for each scale. If you think about the major scale numerically or any of these modes numerically, then any one of the 12 keys that you might play it in will always have the same number associated with each note of the pattern, and there'll be the same uh, theory relative. It'll be like, no matter what key we play it in, if we start with the E flat note, the very next note is always gonna be a major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, et cetera. Okay, cool, cool. So a big thing about this is uh, the interval names. And another thing too, everybody, Working on ear training, that might be a good thing to do too. On Guitar Tricks, we've got a lot of ear training lessons. I believe Christopher Schlegel's uh, one of the instructors who teaches that. It's really good. I teach ear training to some of my students too with the intervals. And we use the intervals to recognize what it is by associating it to something we've heard before. A melody, a song, a jingle, cartoon theme, a commercial music and a commercial TV show theme, a movie theme, okay? All kinds of little fun ways of helping your ear to recognize what the intervals sound like. Cool. All right, hey, Russ, never, uh, better late than never, though, Russ. All right, we're just getting started on the modes today. Dave Carlton saying, I thought I'd understand, thought I understood perfect. Now, I'm not so sure, too. I'm waiting. Well, let's keep going, Dave. And then uh, Leslie says, I have tendonitis, or yeah, tendonitis in both ears. Ah, ha, ha. 
Hey, you know what? Or Leslie, don't feel bad. I got it too. Like when I sleep at night, I hear the high pitch ringing. Just after a while, it just doesn't bother me because I, you know, you just get used to it. Um, it kind of it's not fun necessarily, but it, it's also not bad. So all those years of listening to loud music, huh? Yes, sir. And my niece hurt says whole whole half whole 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 half is easier to learn than memorizing every note name for every scale. But you keep playing the scale patter. You eventually learn the note names. It takes time. Stick with it. Exactly. Great piece of advice. My knees hurt. Yeah. Steve Luca third says he's going deaf. Yep. Careful. Yeah. It's just, we got to be careful folks. Don't, uh, you know, when I go to concerts now, I bring earplugs. Um, and when I do band practice, well, the band I went now, we actually don't practice that loud. But when I used to practice with bands back in the day, it was loud in the practice studios. And I would usually wear an earplug at least in one ear to, to help save them. But in here in my room, I'm not that loud at all. Um, so I don't really, don't really have any uh, jeopardy with the ears um, here, though. So when you practice at home, you don't have to be loud. Just keep it at a comfortable volume. All right, so we've got the scale pattern, uh, the first one up there, all right, Cionian. This is all, if you're familiar with the cage patterns, everybody, we've got lessons for the caged also in guitar tricks. This pattern right here is also known as the E form pattern. So really what's important with the modes is not just knowing the scale and how the shape looks, but knowing the interval names, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, and knowing what chord or chords you're playing over. It's all about trying to follow those chords. So the primary chord, if we're doing C Ionian, is a C major scale. The C Ionian is a major sounding scale. It's a major sounding mode. Some of the modes have a major sound. Some of the modes lean towards the minor sound. And I'll talk about that. But for today, major Ionian is the major scale. It's 100% leaning on major. So look what I've done down here. Let's temporarily skip the middle pattern. This is a C bar chord on the eighth fret using the E form. That says, in other words, the E form cage pattern and the E form bar chord go together. And that's what that is right there. So I'm gonna present the modes over the next series of weeks, everybody in a couple ways. I'm going to give you the cage version of it, the easier, more compact one for guitar players that don't have long fingers and can't stretch too far. For those that want to spread it out a little bit, we're also going to look at each one, how it would lay out three notes per string, which is really cool. If you like Yngwie Malmsteen, Randy Rhodes, uh, Van Halen, a lot of guitar players use three note per string patterns. It's the same exact notes you just get a little more mileage. You get a few extra high notes in there because you're going a little further up the fretboard. And every string has three notes. So it makes the picking a lot easier. Rather than this cage pattern, there's three notes on almost all the strings. But then when I get to the second string, there's only two notes. All right, that's going to mess our picking up. Or it's not going to mess it up, but it's going to change the picking direction. Okay. Every cage pattern always has at least one string. Some of them have two strings where there's only two notes and then the rest of the strings have three. This way right here, three notes per string uh, will be an alternative way to look at your modes. Every one of them is gonna have three notes on every string. So we're gonna have seven different patterns. Same with the Ionian, we're gonna, I mean, the, the cage pattern, I'm gonna, even though there's only five cage patterns, I'm gonna, show you how they relate. Some of the patterns are actually the same as uh, the Ionian or one of the other ones we've done. But the difference will be where the root note is. See, that's the key, folks, is knowing, I'm going to say this in a nutshell. We Some of us have heard of doing inversions with our triads and our chords. Well, the modes are inversions of the major scale. So in other words, and I'll go over this the next few weeks, as we go into these, if you start the major scale on the first note, the root, and end on it, it sounds Ionian. 
But if you start that exact same pattern on the second note, which is not C, it's D, okay? And then play the exact same notes, but end on D. It sounds like it rocks in, locks into the D sound, and then the chord that goes with that, since it's the second note of the major scale, the chord that goes with it is the second chord in the major scale. And I don't want to go too deep into all this, but the second chord in the major scale is always minor. So the second note is D, it'll be D minor. Now, if you play those exact same notes here in this, See, I was just playing the same notes as C Ionian, the C D E F G A B C, but I was focusing in, I was focusing on D being the root note, not C. And the way you really hear it, folks, is not just doing it by yourself like I'm doing, but lay it down over a backing track that's in that case would be D Dorian. Find a D Dorian backing track and try to play the C major scale over it, but you got to focus on the D's. All right, so don't worry about that yet. That's for the next mode we're going to do in a couple weeks. That's the second mode is Dorian. We're going to look at that as in uh, not next week, but the week after that. So let's. Here's your C major chord. I wanted to give that to everyone because try to see the shape of that as it exists inside of this scale. Every note of this E form bar chord on the eighth fret, which makes it a C major chord. Every note there is within this pattern. You can see how it exists right there. Okay. That those chord tones are super important. I'm going to play over a backing track in a minute using the, the scale patterns, but I'm going to focus on those chords, uh, the chord tones. All right. Those are going to be your gold notes. What I mean by gold is those are the best sounding resolving notes. I'll also try to end on a note if it's in the scale, but not in the chord. And you're going to notice real quick that just because I play the notes of the scale doesn't mean it's always going to sound good because some of the notes in the scale don't sound as appropriate or as better choice over the C chord as others. Okay. Let me just kind of read this real quick. Some more comments coming in. Chris. All right. I'm wanting to learn how to play like Brett Mason, Jimmy Klenner, what advice can you give me on how to practice hybrid chicken picking? Well, I, Chris, I could give you, but tonight we're working on the modes for the next bunch of weeks. Um, I teach chicken picking and hybrid picking in some of my one-on-one -on -one lessons. We also have some great lessons on guitar tricks on that, on those styles. If uh, you're a member of guitar tricks, you can just search chicken picking or hybrid picking and see what kind of licks and lessons come up. Okay. So yeah, that's it. I'll, I'll try to keep these YouTube classes not a free for all, but very focused. So uh, that's what we're going to work on. If Chris, if you do search in Guitar Tricks YouTube channel, scroll back because I've done a ton of lessons on di uh, different things, blues. And I, for a while there, I did a few weeks on chicken picking. So you might find it in there if you really search on um, Guitar Tricks YouTube channel. It'd be me teaching it. Um, See if you can find those. Or if you take a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me, Chris, I can give you the curriculum there and give you some pointers there. Um, yeah, great players, though. Brett Mason, yep, and Jimmy Olander. I haven't heard of Jimmy. Maybe I'm a little behind the times, but definitely Brett Mason is fantastic. James, cool. All right, Antoine, yep. All right, David's saying, when you're provised and you go home to a scale – do you go to the three note string patterns or the other pattern? What is primary on your mind? Uh, well, actually, and you said, or perhaps neither. It's actually not neither, Dave, but it's both and everything. Okay. And I'll try something in a minute. My niece hurt says, I took, took me years to learn this stuff. I would encourage everyone to learn the whole, whole half. We're going to exactly, we're going to talk about the holes and the halves next week. My niece hurt. Because if I get off on that, I will get a little too distracted and I want to make sure we have time to finish today's stuff, but you're exactly right. We're going to totally talk about that next week. 
I got you covered. My knees hurt. All right, Dave's saying I can play three notes per string patterns, but I don't think three notes per string yet unless the tab calls for it. Okay. My knees hurt says I don't think in versus cage when playing. I just think where's the nearest note that I need next. Cool. Yeah, I just as once I know what key we're in, what scale to play, I just the whole fretboard lights up. I just kind of quickly evaluate where I'm at, what scale, what key we're in. And then I just see the patterns on the fretboard because I've already done my homework with, I know all the cage patterns. I know all the three notes per strings and I just uh, put them together like that. So let's try this for two secs, folks. Let me do this. I'm just going to put around. I have nothing that worked out here, but I found a backing track that I'm going to play over. And let me just get a little better tone for soloing. Right now, this is just a Blues Junior sound with a little bit of distortion. Let me just add a little bit more crunch. Okay, so I got a track here. Yeah, Dave, the way to get there is just obviously you got to, if you don't practice the patterns and scales and memorize them, you, you're not there yet. So you got to get that first next step or actually not the next step, but while you're doing that, as you get down one mode or one particular finger pattern down like these, for instance, find a backing track and practice it over and try to follow the chords. This backing track is going to go C major seven to F major seven. Okay. That's one possible Ionian rhythm. Now the thing with the, to have a, rhythm that's in that particular mode the chords of that rhythm need to be from the that key that that mode is derived from so we're in c major and if you know what chords are in c major again this is i don't want to go too deep into this but this is another aspect of it too and the chords for c major you'd have a c major chord then a d minor that's the two chord e minor three chord f major is the four G major is the five, A minor is the six, and then B minor with the flat five, or B minor seven flat five is the seventh chord, and then back to the C. Now, you don't need to mess, memorize all that right now, folks. That's what guitar lessons are for. I can help you with that. What I did do is at the bottom right here, I just gave, I'm going to do this in each mode. I'm going to give you just one short little chord progression that's in that modal key. All right, now this, the, the change I have right here at the bottom, folks, it says C, G, A minor, F. So if you play the C chord, G, A minor, to F, it's kind of like Let It Be from the Beatles or a whole bunch of other songs. That's a C Ionian rhythm because it resolves, it always comes back to the C. And when George Harrison does a solo, he always focuses on coming back to that C. There's the C. There's the C. What? See, when he hits that A and parks on it, that's either over the A minor or the F chord because those two chords have the A. Got to find chord tones as you're playing. If you know some of your theory, you can do it that way. But if you got a good ear, you just play over the track until you find good notes that work. And if you analyze it, why does that work? Well, it's probably a chord tone, a root third or fifth. Okay. I don't want to blow everyone's mind with too much of that stuff. So I'm just going to pull back. But that chord progression I have under uh, the last sentence in the text box has those chords. The change I'm going to play over, though, is a little more funky and slightly jazzy. Okay, let me fire this up here. Okay, let's just listen to this for a sec. Part of playing guitar, too, everybody, is listening. Don't play, just listen. So hopefully you guys can hear that. I'll put it, here's the F major seven.
I'm just making stuff up, and I'm trying to cruise through the scale using different techniques. I do some little finger tapping, a little sweep picking. Most of the notes are in Ionian. Occasionally, I throw in a little chromaticism, like a, or like, as long as when you play notes that don't fit the scale, as long as you quickly get off of those bad notes and resolve it to a good note, a chord tone, you can sell it. All right. But um, that was just a little bit of that. Mostly I'm just trying to stay modally so we can really hear the sound of the scale. It's a very happy sound scale, too. It's major. It's going to sound upbeat, kind of very positive. Um, oh, cool. Laura's saying you got a Blues Junior, too. Right on. I love them, man. They're great amps. I actually have two. I've got one, two, and I usually use that one for band practice. And I got a Fender DeVille, I believe that is. Yeah, that thing is a beast. It's ten. It's four 10-inch speakers, and it weighs a ton. I don't like it because it's too heavy. And when I'm going to band practice and gigs, it's so much easier just to take the smaller Blues Junior. It's 112. It gets loud. It's 15 watts. But for playing the little bars we play at and the places, it gets plenty loud. In fact, I always am have. they're always telling me to turn down a little bit. So... Yeah, it's a great little amp. I use that, and I got a tube screamer, Laura, and then uh, a little volume boost, too, for the solos. Okay, cool. David's saying that improvisation has more character than I would have expected from Ionian. Got any song examples offhand or bands that use just Ionian? Well, it's a major scale, so you got to find something that has a major chord progression, Dave. Um, some Beatles stuff has a major sound to it. A lot of Beatles stuff has a minor as well. Um, that, not sure if they really knew any of this information, but they had good ears. Um, another thing you can do too, David, is Google search that. What songs use Ionian? That might be something. And just check them out. And there's When I do that, sometimes tunes will come up I've never heard of. We want to try to find some songs we're familiar with. All right, But I do have plenty of examples of as we go deeper into these modes, folks, um, we're going to find I'm going to have a lot of artists, guitar players that use that particular mode and a few songs. But um, Ionian is just a really happy sound and scale. It's major. Most of the blues that we listen to, folks, and the rock, classic rock, they don't really do Ionian too much. It's more of a minor sound or uh, mixolydian. That's the fifth mode. We're going to get to that. That's a major mode. But it's way used. There's a ton of classic rock songs that use Mixolydian. I was just trying to, you know, Ionian is really happy sound because you got that major seven. Okay. See, that's a big difference too. When you play the major seven over this, it has a unique sound against that track. You can really hear the slightly bit of tension with that. See if you get the track. The major seven. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if I flat the seven, that would be your mixolydian, David. It would be a. So it get, kind of gives a different characteristic. We'll get a little deeper into that or a lot deeper when we talk about the fifth mode, mixolydian date. So let's just focus on Ionian. That's why I want to try to keep everything focused in the class and not get off because um, I'd love to do some chicken picking with the other uh, uh, comment that was up earlier, but that has nothing to do with the modes right now. Other Then you could pick it. You could pick out notes in your scale with the chicken picking if you want. just put around with that. Okay, let's check out the three note per string version, everybody, and I'll give you some uh, topic, uh, some things to do with that. All right, so there's no tablature with page one. Don't, yeah, page two is not tab for page one. It's in a different key. So we'll talk about that next week. Just checking up on the comments real quick. All right, Russ says, cool. Thanks for showing the open, the opening chords. Yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. King 50, so are you just mainly using the Ionian notes of the chords as they play? Well, Ionian scale, I'm using all the notes in the scale of King 50, but when the chords are switching, like if it's going C major 7, I just play notes in the Ionian mode. So I'm just trying to play chord shapes, C major. Then F, or F major seven. I'm, see, I'm also seeing the chord shapes, the triad shapes, even though the backing track was C major seven to F major seven. It's really just a jazzy version of C to F. So I'd see my C major triad, F major triad, C major triad, different inversion, F major triad different inversion. That also helps too, everybody, to get to know your inversions and your triads, because they can go a long way too. Okay, those, it's it's not just one thing that's going to make you a good player, folks. Obviously, if you can't tap, then you're not really going to be able to have any good tapping licks. If you can't sweep pick, you're not going to be able to have any sweep picking licks. If you can't chicken pick, obviously, you're not going to have any chicken picking licks. So we really want to get some of these techniques down, too, that you can apply to country or rock or metal or blues or classical. OK, so learning techniques is a good thing if you want to take your playing to the next level. If all you want to do, though, is play the blues, that's awesome. I love the blues, but you're probably not going to need to sweep pick or tap in the blues, although you could. But it, traditionally, it's not in that style. So just whatever fits your style, folks, I'm not here to push one particular thing on. I'm encouraging everyone to seek out and explore the guitar and check out some of the lessons we got on guitar tricks because there's a lot of good stuff there. Now, I know I had a little audio difficulty, so I am going to go a few more minutes here. If you guys can hang out, uh, we'll go a few minutes past the hour. Um, dude, let me just read the comments, catching up real quick. So... King 50, I hope that answers your question mildly. And I'll be doing the same thing with the Dorian mode in a few weeks and then the Phrygian mode. Um, and you can, we'll talk about that. You'll start to see a pattern of how things relate. Okay. Laura's saying sort of Pablo Cruz sound. Yeah, good one, which is not my thing. I'm a Phrygian person. Well, you're going to like when we do the Phrygian, Laura. I think you're going to like a few of the other ones too. Um, but right now, the Ionian mode is really happy, upbeat. It doesn't really create any dissonance. It's very comfortable. There's nothing that rubs wrong on that. And then knees, uh, my knees hurt. Getting a folding hand truck. I've had three back surgeries. Yes, when you do gigs, yes. A little cart or some dolly to put the amp, the guitar, and the gig bag with 
or whatever bag. I got a black bag that keeps all my effects and cords and uh, some water because it's all we got to stay hydrated, everybody. Uh, the tuner, etc. Yep, yep. <clears throat> yeah, Dave. Cool, cool. Yep, you're right. Very welcome, JV. I'm going to stay a few minutes longer, about five more minutes, and talk about the three note per string one because uh, of that audio difficulties I had a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, at the start of the lesson, JV, if you missed it, the first five minutes or a couple minutes was audio, and I was just trying to reboot it to get uh, back on so I could help you guys with the modes today. All right, so let's check this out, everyone. Three notes per string. Ionian, it's the same exact notes. Listen to this. Here's the three note per string. Sounds like Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, so, La, Ti, Do. And then the next octave. And then we got a couple extra notes we can play because of the three note per string arrangement. Okay, we've got two extra notes that the original pattern, the cage pattern, didn't have. We got the 12th and 13th fret on the first string. And everybody, the nice thing about three notes per string, other than it, it could be a disadvantage for folks with short fingers or can't stretch that far, but if you can, the pattern it, picking is the same on every two strings. If you alternate pick, down, up, down, up, down, up. Next two strings are the same. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Next two strings, same picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up. And that lends itself for a lot of the speedy stuff that like Paul Gilbert and even Mountstein would play. When you got three notes per string, Steve I, same way, you can make up a lick and then just move it to the next strings. It's the same pattern all the way down. And the picking's the same. Okay, you can play a lot faster and even the tapping. And a lot of that works out great with three notes per strings. It's a little extra notes to learn though. And consequently, there's going to be seven different three note per string patterns. So it's a little more memorization in our heads. But hey, folks, this is all good for our brains too. You know, we need to do uh, muscle, brain muscle exercises. And playing music is one of the best to help strengthen that. Cool, cool, cool. Let me just catch up with the comments real quick. Uh, let's see. And I have a guitar chord book by Ralph Higgins. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a lot of chords. Wow. It's, it is 89 pages of just different chords. Impressive, Leslie. Well, for me... I know the theory and I know my notes on the fretboard. So if I see a chord I don't already know, it's easy enough for me to figure out a few ways to do it because I know the theory. But if you don't know the theory, the chord book is a fantastic resource. Good job, Leslie. Cool. Uh, cool, cool. Yep. You're welcome, Russ. Yeah, Ramblin' Man is uh, definitely good point, David. Yeah. Yep, I'm pretty sure Ramblin' Man from Allman Brothers is Ionian. Yep. We'll talk about that at your next lesson if you want, Dave, too. Yep. Cool. Well, Steve, you need these lessons right on. All right, cool, cool. And my knees hurt. Yep, yep. We're going to go deeper. So for homework, folks, what I'd like you to do is just get comfortable with the scale, the patterns, both of them, and then... Next uh, week, we're going to review this briefly, and then I'm going to show you how to practice them in a different key, a slightly different way. Because sometimes guitar players play scales where they have like a droning note. Like uh, if, I, if I put like an open B string and I play like Phrygian, it sounds very like a sitar. Or actually, I 
See, it sounds kind of interesting if you just kind of put around with that. We'll talk about that next week, though. So a combination of finding notes in the chords. Let me just wrap up with this so I don't go too far over here. Let me play over that track one more time, and then I'll call out the chords, right? Okay, here's C major 7. F, I play the notes of F. C. F. Try to end all those runs on a chord tone. C, F. F to E, that's in the C. F. So I'm just exploring a few notes in there that didn't fit, but just trying to uh, experiment with it and come up with ideas. Depends, uh, you know, what you know. So that's where you want to practice getting your picking down, learn some techniques like sweep picking, tapping, uh, hybrid picking if you're a little more advanced. If you're just starting out, folks, and you can't do any of that stuff, don't worry about it. Study an, if you're a Guitar Tricks member in the – Rock course level one and two, there's two chapters, one chapter in each one that focuses on lead guitar techniques. So if you're new to playing lead guitar and you're a Guitar Tricks member, check those out. And rock level, pardon me, rock level one, I can't remember what chapter number it is, but there's a whole chapter that the instructor Anders teaches on lead guitar techniques for beginner to lead guitar players. In rock level two, he's got another chapter on more advanced lead guitar techniques. Okay, that's for someone that can already play some lead ideas but wants some more tools in your tool belt. All right, study those. If you want go a little additional further, I do one-on-one -on -one lessons. You can reach me through Guitar Tricks. And if you're not a member, you can find my website, DaveSalantano.com, and that you can reach out to me there. Cool. Oh, you know, David, I've just mentioned, too, that the chord change I gave for this Ionian, uh, C, C, G, A minor, F, is the same chords to let it be. Duh. Yeah. I said that earlier tonight, Dave, but you're right. It's in C Ionian. It's the same um, Ionian key that we're just doing right now. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, everybody. I'll see everyone next Wednesday. We're going to do week two of Ionian. And then we're done with that. We're going to put a bow on that. And then we're going to start on Dorian in two weeks. And we'll just do the same thing. So look forward to seeing everybody. Good comments and questions. I really appreciate that. It kind of gives me some stuff to talk about besides just running my mouth for an hour. <laughs> and then I, hopefully I'm helping a few of everybody, a few of you folks to, to get some stuff from it. Okay. Just hang in there and then we'll just keep rocking and rolling. Zane, this was an excellent lesson. Yeah. Cool. We'll, we'll definitely try to stay cool, Zane. Appreciate it. David, Jim, Roland, cool, cool. My knees hurt. Roland, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Another lesson with you. And Laura and everybody else, Second Chance Band, Marianne, cool. All right, see everyone next week. Be good and uh, see you then. All right, keep practicing. Peace and keep them fingers flying. See ya. Bye.